Now we've done a lot of different videos on combat like shooting or strategy, but one thing that we've never done is melee fighting. So in this video we'll have a look at how to implement some solid sword combat in Unity. You can of course adapt this to any kind of melee weapon and we'll be working in 2D, but doing this in 3D should have the exact same steps. So let's slice up some enemies. But first this video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN has over 5500 servers in over 60 countries and is one of the fastest and top VPNs out there. While using a VPN you strongly increase your internet privacy, secure your data while using public Wi-Fi, and it protects you from hackers by using a double data encryption. Another great function of being able to access servers all over the globe is that you can access content that might be restricted to certain areas no matter where you are in the world. Get 81% off at nordvpn.com slash brackies or use the code brackies to get two gifts included. Four extra months with the three year plan and the NordPass password manager app for free. Get started by simply clicking the link in the description. Also, special thanks to Infinity PPR for his support on Patreon. And just before we get started, I want to mention that Andreas and I were on a podcast. It's called Duct Tapes. We had a lot of fun. We talked about game dev, stories from running the channel, and a surprising amount of time was spent on random duck facts. Quack. <laughs> <laughs> Quack! So check that out using the link in the description and let's fight! So as you can see we have a very simple scene here with just a main camera, a ground environment object, a player as well as a bandit that is currently just standing around. And if we play the game, we can see that the player movement and animation has already been set up. I did this following our videos on movement and animation, so if you don't have that working already, definitely check those out. And those of course also show how to do jumping and crouching, but I chose not to put that in here. You also notice that the bandit is currently just playing an idle animation. There's no logic on him yet. The sprites that I'm using here are free on the asset store. We'll of course have a link to them in the description. The only thing that I'd recommend is that you go and find the sprites and change the pixels per unit to 32 since we're working with pixel art. But you can of course use any kind of art that you'd like. And I think that we are ready to start creating some player combat. So let's go to our player object. Let's hit add component and let's create a player combat script. Let's hit create an ad and let's open it up in Visual Studio. And we can just go ahead and get rid of the start method here. We won't be using that. And inside the update method, let's go ahead and check for some input. So we'll write an if statement and say if input dot get key down. And the key that we want to check for is key code dot space. So I'm just going to use the space bar to attack. Now remember the input system is currently being rebuilt. This should work for a good while, but if it's not, definitely check out our video on the new input system. It should be really easy to simply put that in here. All right, so whenever we press the space bar, we of course want to go ahead and perform an attack. So let's create a separate function for this and call it in here. Let's just name it attack. So we'll create the function down here, void attack. And in here, we basically want to do three things. We want to play and attack animation. We want to detect all the enemies that are in range of the attack. And then we want to apply damage to those enemies. So let's go ahead and start with the very first one here which is playing and attack animation. So to do this we need to first go into Unity and under our player we of course have an animator component which has an animator controller responsible for choosing which animations to play when. Again, this is all part of the animation video, so if this is completely new to you, check that out first. But as you can see in here, we have a very, very simple setup. We have a default idle animation, and we can transition from that to run and back. We of course want to add a whole new animation on top of this, an attack animation. So let's go ahead and find that. Mine is under bandits, animations, and I'm using the light guard as the player here. So I'm simply going to take the light guard underscore attack. Let's select this animation and rename it to player underscore attack. And now we want to be able to attack no matter if we are currently playing the idle animation or the run animation. In other words, we want to be able to transition to the attack from any state. So we'll just right click on this any state node here, hit make transition and click on the player attack node. And if we then select this transition, we can choose when and how we want to go to the attack animation. Of course, we only want to do this if we actually trigger this transition. And to do this through code, we need to add a parameter that allows us to do that. So if we go to the top left corner here under parameters and hit the plus sign, 
we can add a trigger parameter. Let's call this attack. And now on our transition here, under conditions, we can add a new condition. And we want to change this from speed to attack. So whenever the attack parameter is triggered, we're going to transition from any state to player attack. Really cool. We also want to make sure that we don't have exit time enabled here and that under settings we set the transition duration to zero and this way the transition will happen instantly. And that's actually all we need to do for the animation. Now inside of our script we just need a reference to this animator so that we can trigger our attack animation. So at the very top here let's create a public animator component and let's just call it animator. Then under attack we can go ahead and call animator dot set trigger and then the name of our trigger which is attack and that's actually all we need to do if we now save this and go into unity and select our player we can see that there's now a field for the animator so let's just drag our animator in there let's hit play and of course we can move as normal but if we hit the space bar we perform an attack animation we can also see that we're currently not transitioning back, so it just stays in that animation. To transition back, all we need to do is go into our animator and just right-click on our player attack and make a transition right back to player idle. And we just want this transition to happen whenever our player attack has finished playing. So if we click on this arrow here, we don't need any conditions. We just want to go straight there. However, we want to make sure that we have exit time enabled and we want to set that to one in order to wait the entire duration of the clip. And after that, we want the transition itself to be instant. So we'll just set the transition duration to zero. And as you can see right away, our attack animation goes right back to idle when we finish attacking. So the next thing that we need to do is of course detect all of the enemies that are in range of our attack. To do this we need a few variables. The first one is that we need to define an attack point. Because we don't just want to attack at the center of our sprite. We want to attack somewhere out here in range of our sword. To do that let's go ahead and create an empty object under the player. Let's call this the attack point. And the cool thing is that we can now take this point here and move it to wherever we want to place the center of our attack. So I'm just going to move it kind of outside the player by the sword here. Then inside of our script we can create a public transform and this is just going to reference that point. So we'll call it attack point. We also want a range for our attack so let's create a public float attack range and let's just default this to something like 0.5. And finally, we need to define what objects are enemies and which are the player and other objects in our environment. We'll do this using layers. So we'll assign all enemies to some kind of enemy layer. And then we can make sure that we only detect objects in that enemy layer using a layer mask. So we'll create a public layer mask and call it enemy layers. Now I'm calling this layers because you can definitely have multiple enemy layers and just select all of them. That's totally up to you. So now inside of our attack method, what we will do is we will go ahead and first of all use a function called physics2d.overlapCircleAll. And basically what this function does is that it creates a circle from this point here with the radius that we specify and collects all objects that that circle hits. Now of course because I'm working in 2D, I'm using physics 2D, you could easily just change this to physics if you're working in 3D and change the overlap circle to overlap sphere. It does the exact same thing. Now first of all this circle needs a center point, so we'll give it our attack point dot position. It also needs a radius, so we'll give it our attack range. And finally we can filter out certain layers, so we'll give it our enemy layers. Awesome, so now this circle is being created and it detects all these colliders and we just need to store the colliders so that we can go through them. So let's create a collider 2D array called hit enemies. So this is going to store all the enemies that we hit inside of this variable here. So now we know all of the hit enemies but we still need to loop over them in order to damage them. To do that we'll use a for each loop and we'll say for each collider 2D and we'll call each one enemy in our hit enemies array. Well, for each of these enemies, we want to go ahead and damage them. Of course, in order to actually damage them, we need to first give them some health and all that. We'll do that in a sec. For now, let's just throw out a debug.log saying that we hit and then the enemy.name. So again, all we're doing here is playing our attack animation. We're creating a circle in front of our player to see if he hits anything. We're gathering a list of all the enemies that we've hit. 
we loop over each enemy and print out their name. And if we save this now and go into Unity, our code should actually be working. However, as you can see, there's really no way for us to see this radius of our attack point. And so we might have to do a bunch of adjustment until we find the right values for our attack range and place our attack point in the right place. So let's just write a few lines of code that is going to display all of this stuff in the editor. To do that, we create a new function called on draw gizmo selected. This function allows us to draw stuff in the editor whenever the object is selected. And we just want to go ahead and draw. So gizmos dot draw wire sphere and we'll draw this sphere with a center point of the attack point dot position and a radius of our attack range. So just like we did with this overlap circle all only here we're just drawing a sphere so that we can visually see it in the editor. And of course in case the attack point hasn't been assigned we just don't want to do this so we'll write if attack point is equal to null well then we'll return out before anything happens. This way we won't get any errors. So if we save this now and go into Unity, you can see nothing happens right now because our attack point hasn't been assigned. But as soon as we drag that in, there we go. We can see a gizmo now where our attack point is with our attack range. And so we can start to adjust our attack to fit our character. I'm going to decrease the attack range a tiny bit here. And I think that looks pretty good. We can also go ahead and assign enemy layers here. To do that, we first need to select our bandit. And as you can see, I've already created a layer for this. If you don't have this layer, you can simply click add layer, go in and type any layer that you'd like, and then go back to the bandit and assign that layer. And then inside of our player under enemy layers, we simply need to check off that layer. There we go. And as I talked about, you can of course have multiple layers here if you want. All right, so let's go ahead and try and play test this. So let's hit play. And if we now move over to our bandit and use our attack, we can see that it says we hit bandit. Awesome. So now we of course need to start damaging our enemies. And to do this, we first need to give them some HP. To do that, we'll select our bandit and create a new component. And we'll just call this enemy. Let's hit create an add and open it up. I'm going to get rid of the update method here. And at the top, I'm going to create two variables, a public int with our max health. And we'll set this to 100 and a private int with our current health. Then inside of our start function, we'll set our current health equal to our max health. And what we need here is a function that allows us to damage our enemy, which can be called from another script. And because we need to call this from inside of our player combat script, we need to make sure to mark it as public. So we'll create a public void, take damage. It's going to take in an amount of damage as an integer. And all we need to do in here is simply subtract our current health with that amount of damage. We can then play some kind of hurt animation. We'll do that soon. And then we want to check if our current health is less than or equal to zero. Well, then we have died. And so we need to call some kind of die function. Void die. And in here we'll play some kind of die animation as well as disable the enemy so that he doesn't do things even though he's dead. And also let's just do a debug.log for now that says enemy died. There we go. And that's all we need to do for our enemy script right now. We can then save that and go into our player combat instead. And in here, whenever we are attacking and we want to loop over all of our enemies, instead of just displaying their name, we're simply going to access them. So enemy use get component in order to access the enemy component on those enemies and then call the take damage function we just created. And of course, this takes in a damage amount. We could just put it in here or we could go to the top and create a variable for that. So let's create a public int called attack damage and set it equal to something like 40. And I'm just going to restructure these a tiny bit. By the way, in order to move around lines like this, I'm holding down alt and using arrow up and down. It's a really handy shortcut. And so we can put our attack damage in here and that should be it. If we save that and go into Unity, we can select our bandit and if we go over here in the inspector, we can change to debug mode. And what this allows us to do is actually see private variables. So we can see our current health here. And as you can see, when I hit play, our current health snaps to our max health, which is 100. If I then move over and attack once, it goes down to 60. One more time, it goes down to 20. And the last time it goes to minus 20 and in the console it says enemy died. So now all we need to do is show the enemy being hit and dying using animations. 
And to do that, we'll first go back to normal mode in the inspector so that it isn't all crazy. And we'll find the animated component here. And as you can see, I have another animated controller here called enemy. And if we double click on that, it's really simple. It just has a default animation here that plays an idle animation. Not much to it. Now what we want to do is be able to go from any state into being hurt and then go from hurt into dying. So to do that, let's drag in the two animations. So this is the heavy guard I'm using here. I'm going to drag in both the heavy banded hurt and heavy banded death animations. And let's first of all transition from any state to hurt. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Let's also transition from hurt to death. Or we can transition from hurt back to idle. So that's kind of the way that it goes. We can either be hurt and go back to still being alive, or we can be hurt enough to go to our death animation. And that's kind of the end of the road. Of course, we need to add some conditions to these transitions. So let's create some parameters. First of all, we'll create a trigger called hurt. And this is, of course, just going to trigger the hurt animation. We'll also create a boolean. And this is going to define if we are dead or not. So let's call it is dead. And that's going to be false by default. Then when we go from any state to hurt, we only want to do that on the condition that the hurt trigger is happening. And again, of course, we want to go under settings and set the duration to zero. We can also go back to idle. We want to do that on the condition that is dead is false. And we first want to do this when we are finished playing our hurt animation. So we want to have exit time here. We want the exit time to be one and the transition duration to be zero. And the same thing for our death animation, except our condition here is going to be that is dead is true. And again, one on the exit time and zero on the duration. And that should actually be it for our animation controller. There we go. So now just like we did with our player, we need to go into our enemy script. And in here we need to reference our animator. So we'll create at the top a public animator. Let's just call it animator. And inside of our take damage function, we'll play a hurt animation. So we'll go animator dot set trigger hurt. And then if we die, we can go ahead and play a die animation by going animator dot set boolean is dead to true. There we go. And also we'll just quickly disable the enemy. And to do this, we of course need to disable the script itself here, the enemy script. And we can do that by just going this dot enabled equals false. That is simply going to uncheck this box here so that our enemy script is disabled. But we also want to make sure that we cannot run into the bandit. So we'll also disable the box collider. And we'll just do that with a quick get component call. So we'll go get component of type collider 2D dot enabled equals false as well. And we'll of course put this on top so that we disable this component after doing everything else. And that should be it. If we now save this, and go into Unity and reference our animator here and hit play. We can walk up to our bandit. We can hit, hit him once and he gets hurt. We can hit him twice and he gets more hurt. And if we hit him a third time, he gets hurt and he dies. Awesome. And as you can see, the components are indeed getting disabled. So we can now walk right over him and we cannot damage him anymore. Really, really cool. The final thing that I want to be able to do is just limit the attack rate of our player because right now we can spam this attack animation and that might be a bit too powerful. So to do that, we'll just go into our player combat script and at the top here where we are triggering our attack, we want to add a tiny bit of logic. We just want to add an attack rate. So we'll create a public float attack rate. This is how many times we can attack per second. I'm going to set it to two. We'll also create a private float and this is going to store the time where we can attack next. So it's going to be our next attack time and we'll default it to zero. Then inside of our update here, before we check for any input, we can go if time.time. .time. So this basically just keeps track of our current time. And if that time is greater than or equal to our next attack time, well, then we can go ahead and attack. And so we can go ahead and put in our if statement and our attack here. And if we choose to attack, well, then we're going to set our next attack time equal to our current time, so time.time, .time, plus one divided by our attack rate. In other words, if our attack rate is currently two, we are going to add one divided by two, which is a half. So we're going to add half a second onto our current time and say that's the next time we'll be able to attack. 
And once we reach that time, well, we can go ahead and attack again. Awesome. So if we go ahead and save that now and go into Unity and play test, as you can see, if I spam my keyboard, we can only attack two times per second. So that marks the end of our working combat system. Woohoo! That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also, don't forget to check out NordVPN. Simply click the link nordvpn.com slash brackies in the description and get 81% off and get two gifts included by using the code brackies. Also, remember to listen to duct tapes. Ooh, I guess that means Christmas is close. We'll be taking a break over the holidays, but we'll be back with a new video the first Sunday next year. So enjoy Christmas, everyone, and have a happy new year, and we'll see you in January. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in November, and a special thanks to Infinity PPR, Dante Sam, Samuel, Lost to Violence, Love Forever, Chris, Face of Marify, Megan Frazier, Leo Lissette, Mia Mia Pop, Mohamed Yunis, Daniel Desanik, Jacob Sanford, Naoki Wasaki, Mark Antoine Girard, Gregory Pierce, The Mighty Seuss, Alison the Fierce, Yijit Kaya, and Erasmus. You guys rock!